All right, so this is me. Let's get started. So I'm going to give you an overview of what I'll talk about. We'll go over the ERC-20 contract, some rules about the transfer function, basic rules such as you know, transfer increases the recipient's balance and decreases the sender's balance by the amount. Um, transfer increases the recipient's balance always whenever it's called successfully. Um, it reverts when called with insufficient funds and it doesn't revert when called with sufficient funds. So basic stuff, these should all work, but getting them to work is a bit of a process and it teaches you how to use the tool. So we'll go into rule declaration and uh, reading the output and then figuring out what's wrong when there's something wrong that you need to fix. Okay, so when you're starting with the prover, you need some things. You need to understand solidity a little bit and you need to understand math math mathematical logic a little bit. Um, to learn, you just practice. Um, there's some tutorials online other than these. And uh, the best thing to do when you're reading a contract and trying to think of properties is to not read it too much because then you would, you'll start writing rules about what the contract does and not what it should be doing. So if you say specific things that are too specific, then it might be wrong. You might not want those things to be true. You want to prove things that the contract might not necessarily do. And so this is the main difference between like rule writers and people that just read the code. When you read the code, you want to understand it as deeply as possible. When you write rules, you want to understand it enough to write rules, and then you want to kind of forget about what the contract actually does. You just want this idealistic version of the contract in your head. Okay, so let's start with a basic ERC-20 rule. We want to prove that the first property I mentioned, which is that calling this transfer will, will result in the balance of the message sender decreasing by amount and the balance of the recipient increasing by amount. So we have a picture of this rule here pretty basic you call the transfer function um, which we'll call it in the ERC 20 contract and then you assert some things at the end you assert that my balance decreased and the recipients balance increased so um, so we're missing some stuff right we didn't declare any of these variables so we do that here this is how you declare variables very similar to solidity you just call it what it is it's an address actually it's not so you went sorry <laughs> Um, but yeah, you call, <laughs> you declare the variable, um, you give it a name, you call the function in the Solidity contract, and then store the output, and then you call the transfer function, and then you store the output again to see if it has changed. And at the end, you can actually make these assertions. Um, so we're actually still missing some variables. The message sender is undefined, recipient's undefined, and you can define those like this. So you just input them into the rule itself, um, and these are going to be arbitrary values. So this is where the formal verification part comes in. This is basically, if you think of it as a unit test, it's proving for every value conceivable for message sender, recipient, and amount. Um, and you can also declare them like this. Uh, so there's actually, you could do any combination of those uh, two. You can have them all in the rule name, you can have some in the rule name, you can have um, all of them not in the rule name with the small asterisks, which we'll go over later, and you can read it now if you have great eyesight. Uh, so actually, we don't get the message sender value just like that. We have to declare an environment variable. This environment variable is how CVL, which is the Sartora verification language, um, it gets access to most of the things that are available in Solidity, like message sender, message value, block number. Um, it's actually just those five things that are in the struct uh, in the picture. So you declare it as such, it's ENV, and then you give it a name. We usually give it the name E. And then to call any of the things, you just put a dot. So it's E dot message sender. Um, so now we have this rule. This is a real rule. This will check that calling transfer will do what you want it to do. Um, a little caveat on environments, we actually want to use a different environment for each function call unless there's a good reason not to do it. Um, but we don't want to be doing what's pictured here because that's really annoying. Um, and balance of actually doesn't use the environment at all. It doesn't use message sender, 
message value, any of those. So we can declare the method in the methods block and then give it the, the name at the end. You can see it's end free. So this will tell CVL to not look for the E variable in the function. So you can see in transfer, we actually have the E variable. And in all functions, you will need this unless you declare them as end free and it's okay to declare things that aren't end free as end free because the tool will yell at you and then you'll realize that you made a mistake. But uh, usually you want to declare things that are end free and free. Um, so, okay, now we have a rule we can run. So, um, just a little picture of a uh, methods block. You can declare other things and add information about each of the methods. But for now, we're only talking about end free. There's other things you can do that we will discuss um, probably tomorrow and the next day. Okay, we run the rule. We get this output. Or showed you a little bit of this. You can see that actually the rule failed. The red X, it's a little bit small, but um, it, it failed. And then if you look at the local variables in the right, it's a little bit small. But if we zoom in, you can see that um, with some experience with the tool, you realize this fairly quickly that the recipient and the message sender are the same value. So the tool will do anything it can to make your rules fail. Um, in this case, it chose to pick the recipient and the message sender as the same. So if you send value to yourself, your tokens will not increase. They will not decrease. They'll, just, they'll stay the same. And therefore, the assertion at the end will fail. So to tell the tool that we don't care about this case, um, this in general, you have to make sure it's not a bug because sometimes you might think, oh, this is weird. But you should really consider whether it's a bug or not before requiring to not care about it. But in this case, yeah, you can trust me, kind of, that it's not a bug. And we require it. And then we run the rule again, um, and it passes. You can trust me on that again. <laughs> Other times, I'll show you pictures. Okay, so let's go over what we learned so far. Rule declarations, variable definitions, uh, similar to solidity, uh, arbitrary variable inputs, and uh, which are just uh, values you have. So the environment is also going to be arbitrary. As you saw, it shows the message sender to be the same as the recipient to break the rule. And then you have your methods block where you can declare things and free or give other information about them and the environment variable, which contains some information that's usually available in Solidity. Okay, so the require is one type of assumption. Um, we have other types of assumptions. And I'll go into those by giving an example. So in this rule, we have, wanna we want to prove something a little more generic. We want to say that if you call transfer on someone, then their balance should increase. Um, so let's check if that's how it works. It's not, and we get an error. And the reason is, as you can see from the highlighted section, is that it shows the amount to be zero. So if you transfer me zero tokens, my balance won't increase. So to go around this, you can just put an if statement. You can say, if the amount's greater than zero, then assert this. And if not, you assert true. I showed it this way because this is what the CVL does when you use, um, when it doesn't reach an assert, uh, when it doesn't, when the precondition is not met, it will just assert true. So you'll have some, it, it will, it, you don't have any issues, so it's fine. That's, that's, that's how, kind of how it goes. It only, fails if you have some issues. Okay, you could also just require that the amount is greater than zero. Um, but in this case, what we like to do is use um, implication. So if the amount is greater than zero, then the balance should increase. So this is why I gave you this example kind of because if the amount isn't greater than zero, you will assert true, the rule will pass. And similarly, in this case, if the amount is zero, then you have no problems, the balance shouldn't have increased, we didn't say we expect anything. So we get a passing rule. Okay, so let's run this. Um, yeah, we get this familiar error. Uh, the recipient and the message sender are the same. We fix it here. And so you might ask here, it's the, uh, with the require, why are we using a require here? But before we kind of just put it into the assert and use the implication. And it's because it, it's just better this way. <laughs> they're, they're kind of the same. You can use either one. But usually if it's uh, an implication where you really only care about this case if the amount is greater than zero, then you write it like a, uh, at the bottom. But if it's like a case that you don't care about, um, that, that could be a bug, but it's not. You're assuring the tool that it's not a bug. You use a require. And we can also use by implication. So in this case, it's actually true that 
if the balance increased, then the amount must be greater than zero. And it's also true that if the amount is greater than zero, then the balance increased. So we can add an extra arrow going the other way and the tool will check both cases. And so this rule also passes on a generic ERC 20 token, which is, I think, very good. We hope that it passes. Um, so let's review implications. It's um, like an if statement where the else block contains an assert true. Um, so there's two ways to assume things. You can use the require or use the implication. And you could also use by implications when you want things to go. If it's an if and only if, you want things to go both ways. So now I'm going to introduce something, another new thing, which is the with revert. So this basically lets the tool get access to reverts. Usually the tool only checks cases where there are no reverts. It only checks non-reverting paths. But uh, adding this with revert in front of the function call, it will check. It will go. It will continue on even if the function reverts. So in this case, we have a basic transfer reverts rule that says if the balance of the message sender is less than amount and he tries to transfer that amount, then that function should revert. You should not be able to transfer funds you don't own. So this passes. Here's a little here's a screen picture to make you trust me a little more. Um, and then here's an example of that I want to give to kind of give you a visual of what it means to only care about non-reverting paths. So we have this function. It's a basic function. Um, if you input the variable, if you if you give it 10, it will revert. If not, it won't do anything. So then we have a rule that says call this function with the variable 10. Um, and you can see I have to input the environment variable because I didn't declare it as n free in the methods block. And then I assert false. So if I assert false, this rule should fail if it gets to that assertion. But actually, if you can see here, you probably can't. Um, it passes because it doesn't get to the assertion because the function we called always reverts because we used the value 10 and you can see if it's 10, it reverts. Okay. So when we add this, um, with revert, it gets to the assertion. So here I, I run it again with this, um, with revert and the first assertion passes that it, um, last reverted is true. So it does revert. Um, in this case, it actually doesn't revert for the input being 10, but anyway, and then it reaches the assert false and it fails. So with revert allows you to move on kind of whether it reverted or not, you move on. You can use this, you cannot use it. It'll, it'll let you continue. And um, yeah, see, if you look closely here, you can see the message value is actually, it says not message value equal to zero. Um, I'll show you some more info about this in a bit, but it's basically, uh, the function was not payable and the tool chose to send value to it to make it um, revert. Okay, so here's a, a beautiful visual on what it means for paths to only take non-reverting paths. So in this case, you have this rule, right? Just imagine it's a rule and it goes down. All the R's mean revert. So in this case, you get a green check mark at the top because no asserts were reached. It just reverts and it, it gets out of there. But now if you have with revert, then you get to the asserts and if even one of them fails then you have a failing rule right um you might have a passing rule if all your, all your asserts pass but you you can have a fail with the with revert even if all every path is reverting in this case okay so i showed you an example a basic example of using with revert when you don't have enough funds but what if you wanted to prove that someone with sufficient funds should be able to transfer their tokens um, this is a little bit harder and I'll show you why. So here we have a rule and the, on the left, you can see it's, it's, it's pretty basic. We, you have your required balance of is greater than the amount. And then you call the transfer function and you say that it shouldn't revert, but, uh, you might guess that the tool's going to be able to find some reverting reasons. So the first reason it says is, uh, your functions, you're sending value when it's not payable. So then we say, okay, fine. Require message value equals zero. And then the next reason, uh, you, if you're a little experienced, you can see a bunch of Fs somewhere. It's an overflow. We're using 0 0.8. So it's reverting for an overflow. So then we fix that. The recipient's balance is reverting. So we say, okay, require the balance plus amount is less than max you went. By the way, you can use the max you went thing. That, that's part of Solidity, the max uh, CVL. Um, 
Okay, so what's the next thing? We run it again. Uh, you can see here, actually, it says message sender is equal to zero. So that's not allowed in the ERC token. So we fix this also. Um, and then now the recipient's address is zero. Okay, so, so we fix this also. And then we finally are able to prove that if you have enough tokens and you don't send value to an unpayable function and your balance is not overflowing and you're not sending value to the zero address and sending from the zero address, then you can transfer tokens if you have enough tokens. Yes, uh, my presentation is over. I'm just going to review. Why is it between greater and not greater than equal? Uh, uh, for max unit, I could have used greater than or equal. I could have used greater or equal. I just, you know, I, I was just writing it. Didn't think too much. <laughs> this is why I'm giving the first talk. Um, yeah, so with revert and last reverted, a little review. Uh, it tells the tool to kind of keep chugging, even if everything reverts. Um, a last reverted can be used, yeah, uh, should be checked to check that if things should revert, they do revert. This is pretty straightforward. It usually works. But if you want to check liveness, especially in, this is just an ERC token, we had to add five requires just to make things work. If you want to check liveness, it might be a little more complicated and you might have to get a little more clever on what you're checking. Um, and just an overall summary, we gave you, I gave you some example rules, uh, the transfer spec, the, a little more general version of it. it. It reverts if you don't have tokens, it doesn't revert if you uh, don't have enough tokens, if you have enough tokens and other things, the environment variable, how to not have to use it in every method, which is you do that in the methods block and the with revert and last reverted keywords. Thank you guys very much. Um,